Well, hello, McFly subscribers. So today I'm going to be tying this, a stimulator, simple orange stimulator. These are really good flies. They float really well. They mimic a stone fly, salmon fly, if you tie it in the right colors. Um, can even be a caddis if you want to tie it a little smaller, or if you've got some really big caddises, you could do this. This is actually a size eight, very, very large um, for a dry fly, but they do come, I mean, you can tie them even larger than this. You can tie them really small. I've gone down to size 18. I find if it's much smaller than 18, it becomes pretty difficult to tie these, but um, even 18 is kind of difficult. I generally say probably eight to, I don't know, uh, 16 probably is pretty common, but definitely you can tie them small. So today I am tying on a fire hole sticks, number 718 in size eight. And now I, you know, I am sponsored by Risen, not why I use their hooks, not why I use anything that they have. I do like everything they have. They just don't make this particular style hook, which is generally the 200R if you're going in a different format rather than, you know, Firehole makes their own format. So it's 718. Um, but 200R is pretty common. I think Omqua uses that um, for theirs, but it's, you know, a curved hook. As you can see, it's a long shank curved hook. And that's what you're going to be wanting to use. You can see the same thing here. And they make one, Risen does, um, really good price for their hooks. And that's why I use them. They're a great price and good, um, but they don't make them barbless. Uh, not this particular style, okay? Um, and this customer, I'm actually tying for a customer, and he wants barbless. His name's Lay, and he ordered 25 of these. And I believe he's up in Canada, I want to say. So anyway, uh, for thread, I'm using uh, Viva Sixot in brown. Okay, now if you're going to be tying these smaller, you could always use the 10 knot, and I do like the 10 knot, sorry, uh, because it's a flat thread. But on this size, I just want to give a little extra strength. So we are going to start a little ways down, down the hook. Okay, we're not going to start right up by the head. And I'll show you why in just a second. Let me grab the other fly. So as you can see, it's about where you want to start it. Okay, you can see the transition from the head here to, to the body. Okay, so what you're doing is you're basically just setting yourself up to be able to hit that spot every time. Okay, so you just want to choose. You can go a little further up. Some people like smaller heads, some people like larger heads. I generally find this is about halfway, right, on the hook. And so I come up just a little bit. I would call it maybe three-fifths from the back to the front. Um, so, it, it, you know, up to you. Uh, Two-fifths down from the eye to the, to the back. And then we are going to just build a thread base all the way down to the bend. Uh, not quite to the bend. You want to leave yourself a little room. It's going to be really hard to, you know, mess with the bend um, all the way down uh, becomes difficult. So leave yourself a little bit here. You don't have to go all the way down, but as far down as you feel comfortable, build yourself a little thread bump, small thread bump there, and then come bring your thread right past that thread bump. So next I got this, um, it's technically stimulator deer hair. I like it a lot because of the, how fine it is. And that's the natural color. Now you could use elk hair, you could use anything but I find, I, I really like this simulator style, which is from uh, Nature Spirit, I believe, but any anything should work. I mean, whatever you got, okay? And I'm using the natural color. You can, you can get creative, use some dyed colors. And then we're just sticking it in a stacker. Sorry, I can't show you. I do have a video where I did this, um, where I showed everything, um, more kind of detailed video. I wouldn't say detailed. Um, it's quicker. <laughs> this might actually be a little more info because I'm talking at the camera. But you stick uh, a little bit in the stacker and you'll see how much. Just give me a second. In that was a broken tip. And so I pulled that out. I don't want to have broken tips. All right. So as you can see, it's stacked. Um, it's not perfect and you don't necessarily want perfect. Um, nature isn't perfect. Okay. So I want to bring this back, as you can see, maybe about, what is that, a little under a hook gap. 
You're going to hold that up over it and do a loose wrap. You're going to work your way up a couple loose wraps and then you can give a little tighter. Okay. And what we're going to do is we are going to work this up. If you go too tight, this will flare as you can see, and then it becomes really difficult to work this up. Now, if that happens and it flares, I'll show you what you can do. You can come in with your other fingers and you can lay down a couple looser wraps. Okay. And then you're going to come up to that start there where you had started the thread, as you can see. And that's what I mean is you're just giving yourself like a, a point to come up to every single time, right? So it makes it a little easier. And you just want to come and cut all this off. Some people cut this first to length and then tie up. Up to you, however you want to do it. I like to just cut once I reach that, so I don't accidentally um, <laughs> cut it too short. Um, but anyway, you're building a, a body, right? So this is a hefty fly. There's, It's going to float a lot, um, and deer hair floats, so you want to add a little bit of a body of deer hair. Now, if you compress this too much and start tying down really tight, that's going to compress that deer hair, and it's going to make it not float as well. So there's that. You don't need to go super tight with this. All right, next, could go brassy. I, I like the small. Small is good enough. Now, if you're going to a really small size, I'd generally go down to the extra small wire. But small is strong enough to hold the hackle. So small, you could use gold, copper, whatever color you want. Um, silver, whatever you want. Um, I like the copper for, for this coloration. And we're just going to start that where it ends, you know, right up there. Make a couple wraps up, and then we're going to work our way down. And again, not super tight. Okay, and you don't want to flare the back up either. So if I was to make a tight wrap right now, that would, you can see that starting to flare as I make a tight wrap. You don't want to do that. You want to lay down a looser wrap at the back. Now, if you flare that, there's a way to fix that. So next, we need some dubbing. We've got this. It is bullfrog dubbing. It's a really long fiber dubbing. And these are large dry flies. So I like it a lot for this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, you can't see it being dubbed right now, but I just dub in the, the tip, okay? And you can see here, the rest is hanging loose. And I just grab it, hold it against the, the thread. Okay, since I'm dubbing such, I, I don't usually do this with dry flies, except for really large dry flies. But what this does is it allows you to dub on rather quickly, okay? And we're going to dub on a bit of a taper. Okay, you want it to get a little thicker as you go up the hook. Oh, you want it to try to look. Let's go back a little bit, guys. Usually I do this a little smoother. <laughs> but All right, so I'm going to unwind a little bit, and we're going to get one extra wrap back here, so that way it really builds that, that taper. Once you come to the end, there you go. Let's add a little more. I just want a little more body to this. And this time, I'm just going to dub the whole thing on since we're just doing a short little spot. All right, and this is all ratty, and that's okay. These, these flies are supposed to be very buggy, so you can do that. You can make sure that this is dubbed on super tight if you want. Up to you. Now, next we are going to take a hackle feather. And I've got saddle hackle. It's longer. I suggest getting saddle hackle for this kind of fly. You can do it with a cape, but you're going to be using one feather per fly, right? So this allows you to get at least three or four, maybe five flies. I mean, you can see how long that is. And I've already tied a couple with it. So this is, now it's going to be a smaller size. Um, you could go larger. But I actually like to tie these, and let me pull this other one up, and you can see. See where the hackle is. There's a lot of gap in between the hackle and the point of the hook. And this allows us to sit this way in the water rather than want to turn. If you have too much hackle going into the hook gap, then there's nothing sitting down on this, you know, 
weighing down below the surface of, of the water, like so, and there's nothing going to keep it stable. It's going to want to kind of turn on you. The other thing is, um, this, I mean, you don't have to worry too much about these getting, uh, you know, uh, buoy, uh, non-buoyant. Um, now, you always want to add, no matter what fly you have, you want to add uh, um, floatant to it. But I find that these, I mean, look at all the hackles on there. You don't really necessarily need a really thick hackle to keep it floated. A really large hackle, actually. Um, it's going to float just fine. But what we're doing is, I already did this off camera, but I stripped off a little bit of the back of the hackle here. And it's just a brown, by the way. I'm going to tie this in like so. And come back up. And we are going to make sure that, as you can see, it's angled rearward. Now, you could tie it forward, but I like it looking rearward. It's easier to tie in. Oh, see, it wants to turn on me and go angled forward. So, sometimes these do not want to cooperate, but you can, you can fix that by just kind of rotating a little bit. There we go. And I make one full wrap and then start going into the body here. So you want to try to keep these as even as possible. I'm going slow because I got the camera in my way, but you want each wrap to be even um, because that's going to look better. Because each wrap, you're using the hackle kind of as a, a ribbing, in a way. We're going to come back to the back. Let's do one more. And come back like this. Oh, shoot. All right, let's redo that. It just slipped. Darn camera in my way. <laughs> let's make sure these are nice and tight wraps, because you, you don't want it to come loose. And a loose hackle is going to catch hook teeth a little better and come loose. So you want these quite tight. Now I probably should be using a hackle plier at this length here. But with the camera in the way, I can't rotate it as far. So, all right. So we're going to do one more. up over like so. I'm going to come in with my other hand and hold it there. I'm going to take this wire, wiggle it a little bit and come up over that hackle. Now I've captured it, I can let go. And then you are going to wind counterclockwise, the other direction, up through the hackle, winding as you go. And try to, it's hard to do, but try to have the, the wire even with each wrap of the hackle. As you can see, I'm crossing the hackle at the same spot, each point, right? And that will just make it look a little neater. You don't have to do that. I mean, just more best practices rather than mandatory. Fish aren't going to be inspecting your flies like you inspect your own flies, right? So make a couple wraps over the wire and then I come back. And some of you might be asking, wait, wire? Why are you using wire on a dry fly? Well, look at all the hackle we have. And this doesn't weigh enough to weigh it down too much. So I find wire works really well. Now you could tie the hackle on the back and some people do that. They'll tie the hackle on the back and then dub over it and then wind up. I find this a little more durable. So this is how I do it. There we go. We're going to cut that hackle off close at the back. And now we've created the body. Or in bug terms, the abdomen. Next, we're going to, some people don't do this. I like doing it. We're just going to cut a little ramp. By the way, I use two different style scissors on this fly. I use a standard and then uh, like four inch. And then I use these that are, they're called mitten scissors, both by Risenfly. Um, really sharp, really good scissors. I've used 
I've only gone through one of these in like three years, um, and they stay really sharp. These mitten scissors, they stay really sharp. Granted, I'm not cutting wire with it. Don't ever do that with any good scissors. By the way, I helicoptered the wire off. I forgot to tell you guys that, but you could use clippers to clip off the wire if you wanted. Helicoptering it off is much quicker. But yeah, and then the, you know, these four inch, I've never gone through them. Um, and I, I mean, I use these, I'm cutting deer hair with it. So as you could see, it's a fairly thin piece of, uh, that I used back here. I didn't use a whole lot of deer hair on the tail section. However, we're gonna use for the wing now, we're gonna get a pretty large hefty clump. So if you've not done deer hair before, um, you can see it comes out, it's not super even on top. Um, some people will just hand stack this, just pull out the long fibers and go, but I like to stack it look a little more neat and in the back you can see all this fuzzy stuff you got to remove that the best way to do is with a comb and you just hold the tips and you pull out the fuzzy you want to go through it a couple times because there's still as you can see some fuzzies so you can use your fingers back and forth with the comb really get all that fuzzy out because that's gonna not allow it to be as buoyant and they say that you can cut the wing a little easier off some of the deer hair fibers. I've never experienced that, but generally I comb out that under fur. So I stacked it. There we go. You can see it's nice and stacked. And where we're going to place this, you don't want to go too far up, then the wing looks unnatural. If you go too far back, it looks unnatural. I like to, so here's the, the tail. I like to line up the wing with the back of the hook bend. So basically in between the, the tail. Okay. So line that up grab with your other fingers now you want to pull out enough thread because we're going to make a couple wraps before we tighten and we don't want to have to pull out thread and tighten so we're going to do three loose wraps we're going to come forward and then we're going to tighten okay and then we're going to go back up over a couple more and then come down and tighten and then we're going to go through the hackle like so see where your, your head is which is right up there so we've got a little ways to go and we're just going to kind of come through capture a couple a little less each time as you go because it's you know there we go and you don't want to go all the way to the head or it makes trimming this harder now again some people will cut this at an angle pre tying in and then tie down i don't do that i find this easier but up to you so what I do is I take these and you can see how this wing is now not flared up and out. That's because we did the loose wraps up here and then we tightened. Okay, you definitely want to tighten or it's just going to pull out, but you don't want to tighten right at the first tie-in point because that will flare this up just like this and then you won't be able to tell the difference. It'll kind of, both sides will come together. You won't be able to tell the difference between the ends and your tip or your, the, the tips, the, the wing. So you want to come in with some really fine scissors and just cut around the eye to make sure there's no hackle, or sorry, uh, hair up by the eye. But you don't want to cut all of the hair um, because you want to taper this, and I'll show you in a second. All right, so that's all gone. And we just want to come through, make sure you don't cut your wing, and cut at a slight angle. All the way around you can just a couple of them you can just pull out if you need they're getting difficult and then let's go ahead and make this a little neater trim this up let's get the front really neat so we don't have any sticking out the eye now some of them are going to be pushed up forward watch we're going to fix that so we come up now let's turn this so you can see it come up go under them like so and that's going to start pushing them if you continue doing that it's going to push them up out of the way of the eye and there we go there's a couple sticking up there but that's fine we can all right so you want to be really quick with this because you can burn off the thread and you don't want to actually touch it. There we go. 
that kind of removed it. All right, as you can see, now the eye looks a little better. There's a couple little pieces still, but I don't want to cut the thread. So now we're just going to clean all this up. You're not going to get all of it. Like, you know, make sure not a whole lot is sticking out. If you pull too tight at the top here, it will rotate that head. So make sure you don't, if you're, if you need to get more, come back down, get more thread, go back up, go up over that. Don't pull right at the tip or this will flare. It will also rotate this down. As you can see, it's already starting. It's hard not to do that. Okay, now you could add a like little drop of super glue when first tying that in and that should help too. Um, or, you know, you can always just come in trim off any of the pieces that make it look less even, if you want to, or make it not even. It really doesn't matter too much, uh, in all honesty. All right, so now we are, by the way, so this hackle, I think I might have said it, it's size 16 is what I'm using. This is a size 8 hook, so I mean, it's quite a bit smaller. Um, we're also going to use a size 16 um, for the head. So I like stripping off. I'll show you in a second, quite a bit off of there. And so now I've got a lot of stem to work with. And this is a grizzly. So what we're going to do is we are going to, we need to give ourselves quite a bit of thread. I'm going to come in and tie this in like so. And tie that stem end down as we go down, okay? Now, if you ever do need to get more thread right here and pull, then pinch really tight and then you can pull. It'll flare it a little bit, but we're gonna fix any flare right now with, with dubbing. So now, Bullfrog as well. We've got Bullfrog. This is the light amber color. I think this other one, let me see. Caddis orange is the color. So, but the light amber, you can use any color you want. Lemon, I think hopper is one, um, but we're going to do the same thing with the dubbing. Now, we really want to keep the back thicker. We're going to kind of dub the, um, I'm going to come down a little bit because i got to get a little more thread. Um, we're going to actually build a taper thicker up here, thinner down here. So it's a little different in the way that you usually dub on. So I'm actually going to dub it, dub it on rather than. All right, so you want to come in, pinch and hold it down. We're going to go back up over it a little bit. And we are building a bit of a taper, as you can tell. There we go. And there's the head. And now we're just going to, again, you want these fibers angling back. As you can see how this is when sticking up straight, if it was facing that direction, so there's a, a dull side and a more shiny side on hackle, and you want to make sure the dull side is facing back when hackling it up. So what I do is I do one hackle wrap over there, somewhat loose you don't need to make super tight and then we're going to tighten it up because that hackle will flare that post out uh, not post sorry the wing so now again you want to go as even as possible down till we reach the head now some people would say tie it off right there i like adding one more wrap right up against the head and then I can come through and capture that. So I make two wraps. Do your best not to trap too many fibers. And I come in, pull everything rearward, try to get a couple wraps in front. And I'm sorry, my fingers are in the way, 
blocking light and everything, but it is what it is. So as you can see now, there's nothing into the eye of the hook there. Pull this up, trim it off real close. Again, pull everything rearward. And try not to trap any fibers. It's hard to do. And sometimes you can, if there's any sticking forward, you can use your nail. Kind of work those hackles back a little bit. And it's flared a little more than I would like, but it's all right. And then we are going to whip finish. And always whip finish from the back to the front, right? Um, that'll give you a, a cleaner, stronger whip finish. All right. And there we go. That's done. You could also use, I've got this stuff, um, a water-based head cement, which I use a lot if I've got a lot of hackle up front. Um, you know, but this is a large enough fly that this, actually, I like this stuff a lot better. It's called uh, Bone Dry or Ultra Thin by Solares, and it's a... UV curing resin. So I'm just going to paint a little bit. Don't get in the eye of the hook. Just a little bit. This stuff's super strong. It gives a nice glossy kind of finished look to the head. Looks really nice. It's hard. Um, it cures nice looking and you know it's easy to use. Um, it, you don't have to wait for it to dry. This is ready to fish right away. Um, also, you're not having to like sit on a dryer. Um, once you hit that with a light, which this is a UV light, you know, um, it hardens that. And it's very quick, as you could tell, as long as you get the right powered light. And there we go. That is the finished stimulator. So you can tie these in a number of different colors. Like I said, um, a lot of people tie them a little smaller, but all black uh, for sunfish and stuff. Um, they work for a wide range. Um, of fish uh even trout will hit the all black you can tie um you know chartreuse if you want something bright color or pink a hot pink um you can do all yellow all orange um you can do any kind of color of hackle if you want they're really fun um difficult to tie i would say they're not the easiest fly to tie but once you get the hang of them um, they're just time consuming they're not super difficult i wouldn't necessarily say but they're super effective they float really well um, again, always use, always use floating. So if you have not already, go ahead and check out Risen Fly. No, I did not use their hook today. Um, just because, like I said before, I do not have them in barbless. But they make great quality hooks. This is a company, Risen Fly. Make great quality hooks. Uh, they make rods and reels um at really good prices for the quality i mean it's, honestly they, they have a hundred dollar rod it's actually i think it's like 119 um and it's like the best casting rod i've used i've got a couple really high-end sage rods and these cast just as well if not better in some circumstances you know i really i really do like them for just i mean really good price it's hard to beat they have reels as well that are really good quality i really like their lw reel um, and that, that other rod is called the Genesis that I was talking about, but really good quality. So definitely check them out. Again, uh, go to www.risenfly.com. And by the way, they're offering you all a discount. So type in McFly at checkout. That's the discount code that they are allowing for all my subscribers on your first order. Okay, so after you use it, um, you can talk to them. I think they do some mailing coupons sometimes to their customers as well so use use the mcfly on your first order and then after that sign up with their mailing list and they'll send you some discounts if you want to order more stuff um, they do all the time really great prices even without the discount but uh, with the discount like i said 15 percent off so it does make that rod under a hundred dollars at that point so also guys uh, not all materials can be f bought at risen i think they have some hackle some you know but if uh, if you want more name brand materials i definitely recommend their hooks but if you want other stuff like deer hair um, for instance from nature spirit or something uh, go to the fly artist so www.flyartist.com and actually i've got links below and i have a link below as well for i think they're offering five percent off now it's not a lot but 
everything helps guys so definitely use that um they already have great prices on these name brand stuff and with that discount should get you better price than anywhere um, definitely use that. I've got links to every product I used today, including even a link to the Risen hooks that I didn't use, but a little better price than these others, although these are good hooks too. So if you want barbless, they're good. Um, Firehole sticks, you know, but uh, check out both of those places. Again, links to every single product I use will be in the description section. Um, if, they, if they're not available, the specific product, then I'll link uh, to something similar or that should work, right? So if I can't can't find uh, specifically this hackle, then I'll link to maybe a different brand of hackle that is also as good. I will see you guys in the next video. Now you go catch some fish.